welcome everyone. Um, we are really delighted that you could join us this afternoon for a conversation with our colleagues from Peru, Karen Bernedo Morales, Jorge Miyagi, and Mauricio Delgado. I'm Maria Elena Garcia. I'm faculty in the Comparative History of Ideas Department here at the University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, and I'm one of the co-organizers um, of this event, which is part of a larger multi-year series titled Art at the Borders of the Political, Mobilizing Senses Across the Americas. And I'm Tony Lucero. I teach in the Comparative History of Ideas Department as well and the Jackson School of International Studies. Um, as we like to do in all our public events, we would like to acknowledge that we're on the homelands and waters of the Duwamish, Suquamish, Muckleshoot, Tulalip, and other Coast Salish peoples. Uh, these kinds of acknowledgments have become familiar, but we think they're especially important today uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's useful to remind us ourselves that colonialism and anti-colonialism continue to be crucial ideas and forces that help orient our discussion and action in the present. And secondly, uh, it's important to re recognize the importance of the aesthetic and uh, political efforts of Native peoples and the way that um, we continue to be in dialogue and solidarity with Native communities and Native intellectual, political, and artistic traditions. And I know this is something that is very true of our guests who we will introduce in just a little bit. As Marilena just said, this is part of a year-long series and over uh, this past year, we have turned to different themes to put art and politics in conversation with each other. In the fall, we began with a focus on migration and the crossing across various borders, um, perhaps most centrally, the US-Mexico border, and the way that that has become a site for violence and suffering, but also more positively of solidarity. In the winter quarter, we looked to the north and with our colleague Katie Bunn Marcuse of the Burke Museum, we examined the way that Haida uh, indigenous artists had been um, uh, using their artistic abilities and talents to highlight uh, indigenous sovereignty and their struggles against extractive industry. And this quarter, we turned to the Andean and Amazonian nation of Peru and in hopes to, uh, to understand how art continues to be an important resource in the important struggles there as well. Um, we are continuing uh, the series. We have a, a little bit of um, energy left. And so we actually have one more event coming uh, along and I'll put the, uh, the details in the chat. On June 8th, there will be a, a, a panel discussion on uh, the activism of Resistencia, which is an organization here in Seattle that has been working very hard on behalf of people detained at the Northwest Detention Center, and also a project called Hustle Train 94, which is an artistic um, a visibilization of the violence of the US-Mexico border and US immigration policies. We'll have a great discussion with uh, our artists and activists on that night. You can get more details uh, by registering at that link. Um, uh, tonight's uh, event is a really important part of our series and we're really happy to have these wonderful artists with us. And uh, for that, uh, I'll turn back to Marilena. Thanks, Tony. Um, before uh, introducing our guests, we do wanna take a moment to thank the very generous sponsors for this event. Um, this panel and this series, Art at the Borders of the Political, is sponsored by the Simpson Center for the Humanities. Um, and I also want to just take a moment and thank Caitlin Palo for all of her tremendous support throughout uh, the year, I mean, in previous years as well, but especially for this event. Um, Miyagi Delgado and Bernardo Morales' visit has also been generously supported by the Comparative History of Ideas, African Studies, Latin American and Caribbean Studies, the Jackson School of International Studies, the School of Art and Art History and Design, the School of Drama, the Department of Geography, and Photo Media. So now it's our pleasure to introduce our guests tonight. Uh, Karen Bernedo Morales is an award-winning curator, documentary filmmaker, and visual anthropologist trained at the Pontificia Universidad Católica del Perú. She teaches visual arts at the Universidad Científica del Sur She's also the curator of various projects, including the Museo Virtual de Arte y Violencia Política, the video project Poéticas Visuales de la Resistencia, and the public art workshops Jornadas del Arte. With Miyagi and Delgado, she formed part of the collective art project Museo Itinerante Arte por la Memoria, which received the National Human Rights Award in 2012 and the Prince Klaus Award in 2014. 
Jorge Miyagi is a celebrated visual artist trained at the Pontificia Universidad Católica del Perú. His work has been the subject of solo exhibitions in Helsinki, Finland, and various cities in Peru, and has been included in various collective exhibitions in Argentina, Chile, Venezuela, Germany, Spain, and the United States. His work in countercultural projects, alternative cultural organizations, and public artistic interventions has been featured in various publications in Peru, Argentina, Holland, and Finland. He has also been featured a featured speaker at many academic conferences and events in Peru and internationally. He has been a member of the Aguaitones Collective and the Forum for Cultural Solidarity. Currently, he's involved in the following collective projects, the Muralist Brigade, the Averno, and the Traveling Museum, Art for Memory, Museo Itinerante Arte por la Memoria. And Mauricio Delgado is an award-winning visual and performance artist trained at the Institute of Visual Arts, Edith Sachs. His work has been showcased internationally in Cuba, El Salvador, the United States, and throughout Peru. He's active in public, collaborative, and multimedia artistic productions. His well-reviewed individual exhibit, Between Flowers and Misfortunes, like much of his work, engages the themes of memory, rights, and violence. He was also involved in the collaborative project, Peruvian Art, after the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I'm going to turn it back to Tony for just some quick logistics, and then we will open up our conversation. Thanks, Maria Elena. Um, we are going to proceed in the following manner. Uh, we will turn over the microphone in a little bit to our speakers, and each will have about 15 minutes to share a little bit of their tremendous work. Um, we will take after that some time for your questions. We ask that everybody enter your questions in the Q&A box, which you'll see at the bottom of the screen, and I will moderate those questions and present them to our panelists after their, um, after their talks are done. Um, the, our panelists are um, they're, they're so talented and they also work in various languages. They will present very generously in English tonight. Um, the conversation, though, may go back and forth between English and Spanish, and we will provide translation if that's necessary. So um, we will do a little bit of Spanglish if if uh, if we need to. Um, so I'm very excited to join these tremendous uh, artists. I'm really happy to welcome uh, wonderful friends, uh, at least this uh, this way, visually and digitally, to the University of Washington. And uh, I would ask you to join me all in welcoming our friends to uh, the University of Washington. Thank you, guys. So, Karen, I turn it over to you. Oh, <laughs> I'm the lucky one. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, I want to uh, thanks a lot for the invitation to uh, Marielena and Tony uh, University and all the organizers. Um, uh, I'm going to share with you a project that I made like four years ago. Uh, and it was it happened that was the last project uh, I made about memory um, that was a, a, sub, a, a theme that I work a lot for about uh, like 15 years and now in the recent years I'm working now about women and recovery the history of women um, and um, and in that and this project that I'm going to share with you is the last one I I um, I, I made about memory because it was a difficult one. It was a project that was censored, not the project, but the responsible one that was the 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 uh, director of the Memory Museum of Peru. He he was um, I don't know how to say despedido. Uh, um, I, uh, he was fired. 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 Fire, fire, because of this of this exhibition. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. So um, project is called uh, Resistencia Visual. Visual resistance is in in English. I think is that okay? Yes. And. Yeah, okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and, the, and, I, and the project said 1992 to uh, 17, and it was because uh, the 25 years of a lot of emblematic uh, um, 
cases that happens during 1992, uh, emblematic for the history of political violence of Peru. And one of those two, two, two uh, successes, two uh, um, events. Lengths. Okay, um, uh, happens to be uh, the 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 cop the coup of Fujimori, and the beginning of the dictatorship of Fujimori, and also the capture of the leader of Shining Path, uh, Abimael Guzman. But in this in that year, during that year, happens also the kidnapping of students and the murder of uh, important leaders leaders in Peru. And the, in, and the massacres of uh, in in some towns and bombs that that became emblematic memories uh, in Peru. That that that's why that year 1992 was so important in in Peru, and that's why I made this project uh, Visual Resistance that was a collective exhibition. Um, uh, that uh, are related with with these things. Uh, the the exhibition was uh, about uh, uh, to 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 make posters um, that uh, were related to uh, or connected to that uh, um, uh, things that happened uh, during 1992. But it was open to uh, um, to to, to uh, not only the cases, but uh, also other uh, issues as the the press and the and things that uh, were um, that happened uh, during the dictatorship of Fujimori or during that uh, that year, uh, 1992. Uh, I choose, uh, maybe I should begin to say that I choose this project because now in our country, we are in, in, a, in, in a process of uh, presidential elections and Fujimorismo is uh, um, in competition. The daughter of Alberto Fujimori is now in competition. And, and I think that we are like in a flashback of these hard times that, that happened during the 90s. Even if Fujimori is not yet, and we hope is not going to win these elections, it, it, it would be the worst that could happen to us. Um, I think that we are seeing again the, the, the press that is uh, uh, sell to this <laughs> to this interest and also we we, we are seeing the the, um, the violence and also and especially this speech of fear the fear of terrorism of communism no? and so this project is so important now and and it it allows me to speak of a lot a lot of things that are important now so the project was about the posters, but we are going to talk about that later. Um, the project was inspired in a in a in a project from Chile that that wa that was uh, about um, the forty years of the coup uh, that made Pinochet to Allende. So after the forty years, uh, a place called Londres 38, um, uh, that Lond Londres 38 translation should be London 38, but is the name of the of a street. And London 38, that's that place was a place of torture. And now that place in Chile is a place of memory. And they made a lot of projects. They make they still make a lot of projects, a memory projects. And they make a, a, a project that is that inspire visual resistance to make these kind of posters uh, and, and they call a lot, of, a lot of organizations and social movement, people from social movement, collective, no, not artists. That was the huge difference from uh, visual resistance. And uh, so they made this project and I, I traveled to Chile and I saw this project and I uh, love 
uh, this project, but especially because the, the perspective of the posters they made was so um, uh, contemporary in terms of, it, it wasn't about the coup, it wasn't all the posters about uh, what happened in 1973. Um, uh, they they um, were uh, able to do the link to the system, to neoliberalism, to capitalism, to uh, uh, patriarchy and feminism. And, and so I think that that was the kind of reflection we need to make, uh, uh, to make in Peru, to make here, to link memory with those issues. I, I thought we were not, uh, we, we, we were thinking about memory, uh, only uh, remembering what happened, uh, uh, the fact, uh, recreating the fact. And not, uh, uh, and we didn't have a, a, a view, an, an open view. And I think we still um, on that. And so I I understand why uh, now in this revolution that Chile begins uh, two years ago, and now they have these beautiful results in in the assembly and in the in the in these results. Um, and the new constitution, I think uh, is because they were able to do that link. Um, so the, the, these are some posters of Chile. Uh, what the difference also was aesthetics uh, because in Chile they uh, didn't, uh, um, to, to do the folder in Chile, didn't participate artists but um, organizations and collective and all all of them received the same uh, classes of silk screen. So or maybe all the posters are similar because they were, uh, they attend the, the same classes. Please, if I'm not talking good English, please correct me because sometimes I, I feel I'm, uh, maybe I'm confusing. You are being, doing great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so uh, this is this is visual resistance. This is the folder that contains the the um, thirty five posters, and they were thirty four artists. Um, it was a collective narrative because um, uh, the the methodology was that I um, uh, proposed to artists a lot of themes that happens, a lot of cases and themes uh, like the press, like the uh, corruption and other things um, that happened in 1992 on that, on, uh, or, or that happened during uh, uh, Fujimori, uh, Fujimori's dictatorship. And they made a poster and they choose free, uh, uh, they have freedom to choose what theme they, they want to uh, talk about. And, they, and, and the majority of the artists, they didn't see uh, what was doing the other. So it was uh, until the, the, the exhibition, they, they were able to, do, to see the whole exhibition, the whole narrative. Um, there were a, a lot of surprises. One of them uh, was that I thought that one of the principal of, or the main uh, themes uh, that happens in 1992 was the capture of Abimael Guzman, the leader of Shining Path, but no, um, um, ninguno, none, none of the artists uh, wants to, to, to talk about that. Uh, in fact, the only artist that uh, wants to talk about that, I, I propose directly, I invite him to, to make a poster about uh, the capture of Abimael and then, I understand that was because of the contest, because in, two, in, 2000, in two, uh, 2017, uh, in, during that year, Fujimorismo has a lot of power in Congress and they were doing a lot of bad things. And also Fujimori was, uh, was asking for the indulto, indulto, how do you say indulto? Pardon, pardon, you, you told me that. Pardon. pardon. 
pardon. And, and, and he keeps asking pardon each uh, uh, three years. So uh, I think that nobody wants to talk about that, about uh, um, Abimael's capture, because they didn't, the artists didn't see uh, a danger that Abimael was going to be free, but <laughs> Fujimori does. So I think that uh, that was for. So this was this was the exhibition. Posters were in the in the in the in the walls and it, at the main at the main space. It was um, a, a place when you can see uh, press and documents about the cases we were talking about. Um, and uh, this place is the loom, and that was the problem because the loom, the Memory Museum of Peru, is a, a play of the state. It's a national place of memory. Uh, so, uh, and Fujimorismo was ha had a lot of power during that time. So, um, well, uh, uh, the exhibition uh, was uh, uh, the opening of the exhibition uh, was uh, uh, Thursday and Friday. The Minister of Culture uh, was uh, fire firing uh, the director of Loom because of the of this exhibition oh well this is some of the posters we're, we're gonna see all and you can see a lot of different languages in fact uh, mauricio and jorge uh, they participate with with posters in this exhibition um, and I uh, was very happy with the with the results and also with the, uh, the collective narrative. But uh, people that that censor or arguments that that censor this exhibition, some of them were that it was um, a, a narrative of hate hateness uh, against a political party that was the Fujimorismo. Uh, and the and the posters talk about uh, the press, uh, also about the neoliberalism, uh, the corruption, education, uh, sterilizations, uh, forced sterilizations, and about cases also uh, about uh, uh, homenages. How do you say tribute? Tributes to some leaders that were uh, uh, or, or or some students. That were that were murdered uh, for uh, by orders of Fujimori about mobilization, about demonstrations, uh, about memory. Some some posters are very tender. Some of them are very hard. Uh, for example, that one that says "terrorists of, of state." And I uh, I have to confess that when I saw, uh, for example, this poster, this red, red poster that said terrorists of state, I kind of think that maybe we, we can have a problem that we show this poster in a place of the of the of the of national place. But uh, when I, I show the the people from uh, Loom this poster, they told me that, that uh, it, it was not going to be any problem with that because terrorism state uh, exists. Um, and so um, these are uh, some of uh, some of the other posters. Uh, a beautiful thing about this project was that uh, we made uh, 120 posters because it, it was intended to have uh, a lot of uh, exhibitions, and that poster and the, and the folder with all the posters were uh, um, going to uh, uh, give to persons for free, collective organizations that were that wants to do something with some exhibition or some process or some uh, or something with the, with the posters and and it was beautiful the kind of things different kind of things that people made with the posters uh, so it, what happens was that someone tweet that uh, they they uh, tweet to a congressman to a Fujimori uh, Fujimori congressman that uh, that the show, the exhibition is uh, full of plenty of hate hateness of hate plenty of hate and that uh, and and this congressman said oh yeah okay we are doing something about that. And in the next day, uh, well, um, director was fired. And so there are a lot of debates, but uh, um, 
in, 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 the, in the area of the arts, the debate was that uh, aesthetic, uh, that the poster were the poster were ugly, the material the, that was not that was activism and not arts. And so the, that kind of discussion, uh, I I found that it, it was not that interesting. But I think everything is criticable. Everything can be uh, put Criticize. under criticized, everything can be criticized, but I think that um, that but that for that moment, uh, th there were an, another and another important discussion and that that it, it wasn't that it, that discussion. Um, so there was a polemic between the, the biggest curators of Peru uh, talking about that it was art or activists or it, it was a mistake to put this kind of uh, exhibition at Loom. Uh, but in for the other side, there were another discussion that active that this exhibition activate that was what happened with a place that is from the government. Uh, uh, and when government, when the state, when the, the when Peru has uh, uh, responsibilities in human rights violation, what are the limits? What are the possibilities with a national place of memory? when the government ha hasn't uh, uh, asked for forgiveness, uh, a real forgiveness, no a forgiveness that came from the, the uh, um, uh, funcionario, funcionario de turno, how do you say? Official. For a, a, a official, for the, for the official of the moment. So uh, there were another kind of articles that came from journalism, or anthropologists, uh, scholars that put under a discussion this uh, point of view. That was the first time that people discussed public, public, publicly uh, um, about Loom. Uh, so it was interesting uh, um, in, in that perspective. So. Uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the arguments that um, the government said when they fired Guillermo Nugen, the director of Loom, was the that was that uh, uh, that uh, that was I don't know how to say because they use a word that was mellar mellar la credibilidad mellar that was socavar that was um, undermine undermine. undermine. And that that this exhibition undermined the credibility of Loom. So I I want I went to Loom again and I took pictures about all the exhibition and I found that the exhibition said the same things that we said in Resistencia Visual. This is some of the posters and and the other uh, and and in the other side you can see some of the newspapers that are uh, uh, put in the in the permanent exhibition of Loom. So for me, <laughs> that was very weird. But uh, uh, one tweet I, I remember that said, how can a place uh, of, of the state can put uh, Fujimori culpable, Fujimori's guilty with the, with the money of the government? Uh, this is not good, no? One of the tweets, I remember. But that was already there. I, I, I didn't put something, anything new. So this is all of the, of the posters and that was the uh, uh, per, um, permanent exhibition of Loom. They talk about the, the, the corruption of Fujimori and Montesinos and the poster is, up, is all, <laughs> almost the same. They talk about the, the press, the garbage press. We said garbage press. Um, and also the, the map of uh, one of the kidnapping of students. And so it, uh, the, the things that we talk about resistance visual were very similar. Um, so I think that, uh, that, that there, is, there are a question that I um, always uh, made uh, that it was um, what happened if resistance visual uh, was exhibited like one year after, two years after. Uh, I think that will probably uh, uh, would not happen. What happens in that time when Fujimorismo has a lot of problem, a lot of power, and they abuse of that power. Uh, that was 
That, that's why Congress passed Congress closed, because of that abuse. And then where, after resistencia visual, uh, the censorship go, goes on and the image in the eye of the storm was uh, uh, in the um, uh, uh, keep, keep going, no? And so they, um, a month, a month after that, uh, three or four months after that, they censored uh, a government accused an, an exhibition of a, a traditional art of a B apology of a shiny path. Uh, that it was insane because <laughs> that exhibition uh, happens that they were uh, uh, Fujimorismo was with so much power they want to censor they were in they uh, start a war against culture and arts and also uh, uh, against the uh, museum of memory of Ampaset. Um but uh, a beautiful thing that happens in resistencia visual was a lot it was that uh, censorship I think that put uh, a resistencia visual in a in in a good place of publicity, maybe that a lot of people uh, understand and wants to make so things uh, with resistencia visual. So uh, until now, there are like a, about fifty uh, uh, exhibitions uh, or fifty things that uh, uh, people uh, uh, have done with the posters. Um, one of them that I like a lot that I, I, I want to talk about like very shortly is uh, the exhibition that happens in Mexico. Uh, it, it was in the University of um, Claustro Sor Juana and in the and it with, for a museography uh, seminary and it was very interesting because uh, because in Mexico there are a lot of happens a lot of human rights violations against the students against uh, journalism and they were able to make the link even if the exhibition is so Peruvian is so uh, connected with Peruvian context I think that they were able to connect it to 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 that uh, to that contest and it was really interesting but that happens a lot in in, in other places even in in the United States in um, uh, also in a museography uh, uh, um, uh, Sub course, uh, I think that uh, uh, people and, and uh, students were able to connect with their, their own problems of migration or, or other things. So yeah, that's all I want to share and, and, and maybe we can uh, talk more later. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Karen, that was fantastic. That was terrific. Um, we are going to move on to Jorge Miyagi, uh, who will be our next speaker. Jorge. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. My English is not very good, so I will read about my I work. <clears throat> I'd like to begin by clarifying that I am one of those artists who are ashamed of their old artwork, and I find many criticizable aspects and deficiencies in them. However, I'm going to present my artwork chronologically, arranged along a timeline. It's important, uh, I think it's important to highlight that any artistic career is a process of search, trial, and error, action, and reflection. In other words, it's not only about art, but a fundamental search process. Okay. I'm studying painting in Lima from 1995 to 2000. <clears throat> Sorry. In 2001, I did, well, yeah. I did what all artists do to enter the job market, go to the art galleries and show my artwork. But things went bad for me. I was told that my paintings were not very commercial and the best selling art was the abstract art. So I went drastically from being a student to being an employing person, and then to have a small job as an assistant at an NGO. I was not working in art, and I thought that I have studied for six years in vain. 
Then I made some sticker with a phrase, art equal life, life equal politics, politics equal commitment. Just for re release my anger, I put up the stickers around the three art schools available in Lima. This artistic intervention gave the name to my first solo exhibition in 2002, entitled Art Equal Life, Life Equal Politics, Politics Equal Ethics, Mr. Miyagi Counterattack from El Averno. El Averno, which means hell in Spanish, is not a wide wall gallery, but a countercultural center with an occupied movement spirit. In this picture, you can see what El Averno looks inside and outside. For example, okay. <clears throat> to my surprise, the media was very interested in the exhibition. I appeared in many newspapers and on television. After that, I became more involved in more involved with alternative art spaces, and also I began to receive calls from galleries and cultural centers. In mid 2002, I was finalist in the most important fine art contest of, of Peru, managed by Fundación Telefónica. The $20,000 prize consisted of a flight and a scholarship to Spain. Since I was one of the 14 finalists, I had the right to exhibit the painting that I wanted to, <clears throat> without restrictions of any kind, whether of thin or form. Therefore, I didn't miss the chance and I made a painting based on Telefonica Worker Union documents reporting mass layoff. Because a few years ago, thousands of workers were illegally dismissed by Telefonica during the privatization process of public service. And the other artwork depicts the cardinal of the Catholic Church and a light of the string right Juan Luis Cipriani portraying with a Nazi symbol on his head and being crossed out by Pikachu. Telefonica was required to exhibit these artworks, but decided to censor me. Then I appeared on political TV programs and also I was accused of being a Figuretti, a Peruvian slang term referred to a person who does things to draw attention. One of the most important art critics in Peru wrote many articles about me in a weekly magazine, accusing me of being the words of the words. Since I have always told that the power of art critic is based on the artist's inability to defend their own artworks, I replied to him with letters, which were published by the magazine. An exhibition on kimono was organized by the Japanese Peruvian Cultural Center in 2003. Its participant artists receive a kimono to be artistically intervened. As a grandson of Japanese migrants, I have seen how the Peruvian Japanese community institution in Peru had an ominous silence in the face of the crimes committed by the Fujimori dictatorship. They would even invite Fujimori to some official ceremonies. I have, I made, pardon, I made a kimono with the phrase, let's never forget, which includes the dictator perpetrator faces and a mirror with a phrase, silence complicity, so that viewers can compare their own reflection and ponder about the extent to which the failure to intervene will make us accomplices. <clears throat> the artwork was withdrawn from the exhibition the night before the opening and was not on display. However, this artwork gave me great satisfaction later. Since then, since then, <laughs> sorry, since then, this kimono has been on display in many places and has appeared in many local and international publications. From time to time, this kimono gains importance again due to a potential return of the Fujimorismo. During the 2010-2011 period, 
uh, I came up with the idea of mixing Buddha, the waking one, with the Ekeko, an Aymara gods related to prosperity and wealth. I painted many Buddha Kekos which made visible what power make invisible. Entitled Buddha Keko of Rebellion, this painting portray, portrays the Peruvian poet and guerrilla fight, fighter Javier Ero, who died at 21 years old in a Peruvian jungle river, shot down by the army forces in 1963. We can see his picture and the river where he died. This painting is entitled Our Lady of Rebellion and portrays, portrays a virgin with Maria Elena Moyano, a leftist militant murdered by the Sendero Luminoso terrorist group in 1992, and two angels wearing the beef for vendetta and pussy riot masks. Mm -hmm. This other painting, Peru, take, take this chalice from me, is entitled with reference to the Spanish Civil War team book of poem by Cesar Vallejo, Spain, Take This Chalice From Me, inspired on the Guernica by Picasso, but with images from recent Peruvian history, the farness at Los Cabitos military base in Ayacucho, where the corpses of the torture were cremated, the typical murders by Sendero Luminoso leaving threatening messages, the Jaguar Fiesta, the condor with the bull, the image of a girl at the wake of her peer murdered by Sendero Luminoso, etc. The Powerful Hands is the title of this painting. In the background, we can see one of the lakes which will disappear if the conga mining project goes ahead in Cajamarca. Conga is one of the main social environmental conflicts where the peasants and the environmentalists are confronted with a mining investors allied with the governments. Social fighters like Mama Angelica, Pedro Wilca, Maxima Cuña, and Marielena Moyano are depicted as the sacred family. At the top, in the clouds, we can see a representation of the Pachamama, Mother Earth, by the chronicler Juan Santa Cruz, Pachacuti. Okay, paintings from my, I'm oh, no, sorry, this one. We can see in this painting, Edwin Chota. Edwin Chota was an Ashaninka leader murdered by illegal logging mafias in the Peruvian jungle. He was not only a community and environmental advocate, but also a brother of the trees and any living being. When he went with a prosecutor to inspect all felled trees while placing his hands on one of the trunk, he told him, touch it. Don't you feel as if a relative has died? Okay. Some press reports. And, okay. Now, painting from my solo, ex my, my last solo exhibition. This painting is, okay. Gregorio Condori. During the uprising led by Tupac Amaru II, groups of indigenous rebels tied down the statues of St. James found in the churches. So that the patron saint of the invading forces will not come out, come out to fight on the battlefield. Here, I depict Gregor Gregorio Condori, a rope carrier in the Cusco market. Gregorio is carrying, tying up Santiago Mata Indio, St. James, the Indian Slayer, and the mountain, the Apu Sangate, and Tocapu designs, complete the composition. <laughs> in the autobiography of Mariano Larico, include in the book, I was Jose Carlos Mariategui News Boy, I read about Larico's encounter with the Anchancho. What is Anchancho? Anchancho is a type of muki or imp, a demon goblin-like creature. I thought it was a very significant anecdote through which to reflect on the process of interpolation between Eurocentric modernity and the original worldviews of the colonized people. And a chancho appeared, and I say, now 
I got myself in trouble. Now I really got myself in trouble. I remember that you were supposed to whistle to chase away the chanchos. I tried to whistle, but I couldn't. I tried to shout, to shout, but I couldn't to do that either. The anchancho began to make a sound, ching, ching, ching. Jeez, I said, what should I do? I couldn't look at it straight on. Just out of the corner of my eye, I could see he was coming. Then I plucked up my courage and I said, damn it, I'm a Marxist. And I started to whistle, little by little, as I started to whistle, I whistled the international, the international, what I whistled, and little by little, the chancho started to fade away. I keep walking, more poised now. Now I keep going and going, and that's how I sell, save myself from the chancho. <clears throat> My hands hold the Osenko. It's like an incense similar to Andean Quinto, making an offering in accordance with the Japanese tradition of the Bud Sudan to my guardian ancestors, and through them to the great life spirit that, that impregnate everything. On the Ihais, Ihais are the little red wooden boards where the name of the deceased family member is written, in the Ihais, I drew the houses of my mother's side of the family in downtown Lima and my father's side of my family in Callao. Everything is washed over by the Shisas, mythological beings from Okinawan tradition, believed to act as a words, no? as words. Okay. The sculptor Lika Mutal is the creator of the memorial El Ojo Que Llora, the crying eye dedicated to all the victims who died during the period of political violence in Peru. The writer Luis Freire, during a visit to this space with a sculptor, once said to her, every stone is a mountain for the person who cries for it. After visiting this powerful memorial and coming across this quote, I thought of all the wounds that remain open, but also the love that is behind the struggle forced by the victim family members against oblivion and impunity. Some press reports and last paintings. Vamos bien con el tiempo? With the time? Muy bien, muy bien. Okay, last painting. In, colon sorry. in coloniality of power, I painting a sculpture of Columbus that is found in a well-known street in Lima. A Pikachu from the Pokemon Go game in front of forest uh, fires and an allusion to Uruguayan artist Joaquin Torres Garcia drawing who symbolically turned the map of Sudamerica upside down. We rarely think that if we see the air from the outer space, the north, south, west, east, as well as above and below, results in arbitrary reference. The world map that we know express a power relationship. Europe is represented in the center and above everything. Okay. The Peruvian constitution, like the Chilean one, is the product of a coup d'etat. In my opinion, it's urgent to think of other ways of relating, prioritizing the interests of the majority and not that of large companies. One image corresponds to the 1992 coup in Peru and the other one to the graffiti in Chile during the protest in 2019. <clears throat> Okay, questioning my, myself about the dynamic of the dynamics of social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, este, TikTok, etc. And questioning about spaces for contemplation and interiority, I'm painting Mars U. It showed a WhatsApp sticker with an image of Mars and reference to the anime Naruto. 
Ugu means happiness or tenderness in otaku culture. In that way, in this painting, you can see the judgmental dog and the vegetarian cats characters uh, that appear in memes and chats together with other signs of communications in social networks, playing hard stickers. On the right side, a phrase by Mariategui can be read. The phrase is usually synthesized in militant and artivist spaces with the slogan for bread and beauty. Although the, te the textual quote is like this, the revolution that will be for the poor should not only be the conquest of bread, but also the conquest of beauty, art, soul, and all the indulgences of the spirit. Thank you so much. And I look forward for your questions. If you want to see more about my artwork, you can check out my website and my blog or find me on social media platform. I hope I have my I, I have my I, will, I hope I have made myself clear. Thank you. <laughs> Gracias, Jorge. Wow, that was amazing. This is fantastic. Um, can't wait for the questions. Uh, okay, and now, last but not least, is Mauricio Delgado. Mauricio, take it away. Um, uh, just uh, Marielena said at the beginning of the presentation, I'm Mauricio Delgado. I'm a Peruvian artist and a human rights activist. And I'll talk to you uh, as a Peruvian, as an artist, and as a human rights activist. Uh, I will talk about some so about art, historical memory, and activism from my own perspective, and it, it which are inseparable from my our historical Peruvian context. Uh, 2021 is the year of our, our bicentenary as an independent republic. Unfortunately, it has been configured uh, as one of the hardest years in our history. The coronavirus impact has made visible our deep inequality. Currently, our health system is collapsed. 2021 is the year of our bicentenary it's an, as an independent republic. And um, unfortunately, it has been configured as one of the hardest years in our history. The coronavirus impact has made visible our deep inequality. Currently, our health system is collapsed. Our institution has been weakened by corruption and the politics. An ethic crisis is rising. However, we can also see solidarity and social organization as a way to survive. In the eight, but first of all, let's take a look uh, at some years back in time. In the 80s, Sendero Luminoso, the Shining Pack, started a fight against the Peruvian state, using terrorism as a main weapon. The Peruvian army replied with the same ferocity. Both organizations and the police are responsible, according to the Comisión de la Verdad y Reconciliación, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, for the death of almost 70,000 Peruvians. It was the worst war in the history of Peru. The 90s were the years of Fujimori dictatorships. During that, during, during that period, corruption and human rights abuse became institutionalized. And it was the beginning of neoliberalism as the economic model. Once our democracy was recovered, the true, the, the, the Comisión de la Verdad, the, the Through and Reconciliation Commission was created. I remember that uh, that that event. I was a I was still a student at that time, and the process of public hearing and reading its final report was a shock for me. Nobody talks about genocide, for example, or in people before that before uh, the the final report. Since then, it has become a resonant topic in my work, and of course in my political commitment. As a result, my first exhibition, my first, my first individual art exhibition called Entre Flores Infortunios, Among Flowers and Misfortunes, was addressed to the indifferent city of Lima, which has historically turned its back of the rest of Peru. Remember, 75% victims were Quechua people and they were living under poverty line. 
it's important to say that at that point, uh, Peru is a post-colonial racist society until now. I propose to talk, uh, to look at these images from the conflict 20 years later. The violent images of the war in Indian communities, which got Lima through the press and audiovisual media are mixed with a gender background of floral prints used by the, the urban middle class uh, to decorate curtains, bed linens, and furniture. Through the material, we obtain a group of a group with beautiful harrowing war images. Just like our memory process, confusing, incomplete, and contradictory. In the new millennium, traditional social organizations like unions, left parties, etc has turned to the political life. While new kinds of organizations with new demands, such as feminism, gender equality, or cultural rights appears in this sense. Art and cultural activism are a new, a new waves to political participation. In my case, it's inside human rights movement and Cultura Vida Comunitaria movement, where I have developed some of my work. Un día en la memoria, a day in memory is a visual, a visual calendar which attempts to highlight the scale of the barbaric acts committed, committed during the internal armed conflict in Peru. The aim of the project was to publish the events of the war every day in a blog and a social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and, and a blog, of course. The project finished uh, in December uh, 2012 and still exists as a depository of free accessible images on internet. Yeah, this is, these are some of, what, of the whole group of images. Uh, they were uh, 285 uh, images uh, at the end of, the, of this year. No? I, I made uh, a lot of images in that year. Uh, one interesting result of this calendar is that these images are still used by several collectives until now, and social movement and activists, uh, and this has given it uh, a new life that I had not originally envisaged. Uh, this picture is right now, this picture is probably one week ago uh, on Guamanga, Ayacucho. In Guamanga, Ayacucho, sorry. Mm. According to my own human rights and historical memory commitment, after several years arose a desire to problematize this task by myself. Then uh, this piece of art, El Cuarto del Rescate, the rescue room, is for me is, is a claim, but also is a reflection. I was thinking about the sentence uh, para que no se repita, so it won't happen again. And I think it this, this sentence gives us just that, a full sentence. Although it's not exactly a true. Does this phrase guarantee us that we'll never experience a dictatorship, an internal armed conflict, or something even worse again? Probably no. Just take a look uh, to Peru right now. Actually, uh, now we, are, we have to avoid again uh, the daughter dictatorship, uh, dictator, uh, Keiko Fujimori becomes in a, present, a president again. Uh, well, at this time, I was researching about monuments, memorials, and public space. This project is the beginning on these issues in my work. The art installation, the rescue room, and the memorial propose two lines of reflection. First, the analogy between the historical rescue room in Cajamarca where Atahualpa, Atahualpa is the last Inca, who, uh, the last Inca uh, who once captured offered a payment for his freedom, which were two rooms full of gold, full, two rooms full of silver and one room full of gold up to the top of his hand raised. And uh, the right side of my screen and La Ollada, the biggest exhumation field in Peru. The installation had four rooms, but one room was the core, a similar one to the historical rescue room. And it was showed uh, in a 
underground gallery on the Escuela de, Bella, de Bellas Artes here in Lima. I wrote with charcoal and four disappeared people's names, like Atahualpa at to the top of my hand race. Writing was, writing, in this case, writing was a, a metaphor, a metaphor for my memory act, for the memory act, sorry, because the titanic tax of writing the name, of, of writing the name of 60,000 and four disappeared people on the walls seems to be as unimportant as it is unsuccessful. They were so many. All of them were writing, were written until it was very difficult to distinguish from one another. I wrote their names during two weeks, every day, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., while two close friends dictated every single name that was writing, written. I was prepared. I took five minutes. I, I took five minutes breaks per one hour of work. At the end of the day, or at the end of each day, I wore a bandage on my hand to avoid any injury. After some days, I didn't even need rest or to bandage my hand. My muscle was adapted. But I wasn't prepared to, I wasn't prepared for the emotional impact of hearing and writing their names every day from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. during two weeks. It is so far the hardest work that I ever done. They're all, all, they're all in the room. They are all in the room, but we don't see them. We know they are there, but we can't identify any name. We deal with memory from the ephemeral and intangible, a performance that no one saw, an underground memorial, weak charcoal nails written. It seems, it seems like a contradiction to recall uh, with brief and precarious materials. They were in strong materials in these installations or big and visible obelisks. It's exactly the opposite. The opposite. Then here, the emphasis is on the action. The installation projects the dialogue between recent memory and history as a part of a large process to understand our recent past in an effective way. It's a metaphor in which Peruvians still pay the rescue with their life. But on the other hand, the concept of anti-memorial is used as a strategy with the intention of questioning memorialization initiative and activism. Memory is an action that, that must be done permanently to be such. It's a muscle that it must get exercised daily. It's not enough to petrify it in a single glance, in a single space. People said a picture worth a thousand words, but a thousand words are necessary. They have to say, it. They, ha they, they have to be said. Memory is not the monument. Me memory isn't in the piece of art. Memory is always a social fact. We must assume the role of art and visual production insert in a social framework. The art power will be that the art generates. Last year, 2020, uh, was the hardest time to our families and countries. We live in isolation to the quarantine. Meanwhile, we saw how our health system collapsed, but also uh, we were in the middle of an economic crisis. Actually, all Latin America is convulsing right now. It's time to change here in Latin America. Just take a look at Chile or Colombia nowadays. Algo va a pasar, something is going to happen. It's a 12 intervi intervention series in 12 points of Lima City through a, a small cement relief on oil painted. The series was worked during 2020 quarantine and was installed uh, during several nights. They were installed in residual spaces, a house to be demolished, a dark corner, a corner for homeless people or an isolated bus stop. They were a message for they were a message for curious and awake glance. In this context, 
something is going to happen, delegate, delegate pieces are from me uh, as a whisper in the middle of the city to remind us and point out the structural and historical problems of our public and its relations present. Each of these reliefs is like a visual contradiction between the image painted, painted uh, on the peaceful and harmonic forms and its supports. They are beautiful and conflict, conflictive en encounters between past and present, memory and history, change and tradition. tradition. The project ends uh, with two pieces in memory of Inti and Brian, who two youngsters started by, by, the, by Peruvian police uh, the, last, the last year during a demonstration against the push perpetrated uh, by Manuel Merino the last November. The, this politic hardware was a non playing context frame to finalize something was going to happen. And I really hope that something actually happened in my country. This ephemeral memorial has been destroyed and revealed several times by both sides of the confrontation. Once it was attacked at the same time that Ojo Que Llora Memorial was attacked too. Uh, just uh, Jorge talked about uh, El Ojo Que Llora, it's a memorial in tribute to the victims of our conflict, uh, armed conflict. In November, some poster reads, are we free? Like this kid in the picture, I wonder if we have a country with a strong, is a strong inequalities and the majority of the population can live their lives as they would like to, is real, is real our democracy? Are we, a, are we a republic? I believe art is a good way to rethink our imaginaries of nation. I wonder which ideas remain in our nation. Do our dreams of freedom have to be renewed? Do we need a new model of nation according to our cultural diversity and the new contemporary agendas? And the most important question, what should be our role as a citizen, as a Peruvian? Project 200, the glance from the Liberator, is a site-specific and interactive art at, a, at San Martin Square. San Martin Square is a, is a square in, in Lima. On Lima, in, on Lima downtown, actually. It's a very important um, space. It was, it was going to, to take place, this, this art, this project, it was to take place the last, the last year, but I was postponed. It was postponed, sorry, it was postponed because of the pandemic. This year, I hope so, I'm, going, I'm supposed to show it uh, the next July. Are we going to set up a horse replica from San Martin and the square that holds his name, but without San Martin? The installation stripped the monument of all paraphernalia. There is no pedestal, and even more, there is no hero. It's an incomplete as a constant tax for all of us. The horse without a rider waiting for a new liberator. This, the piece is, com is complete, is complete when it's altered by the invite to take place of San Martin, of Jose de San Martin. It's a monument, it's a moment to express our diversity. I really want to look an Afro-Peruvian woman in San Martin's place, or a working class man riding up the horse, or a trans woman as a liberator, or one of the disappeared mothers as a new symbol of our nation. This is the horse the, for, the, for the Contra Monument. This Contra Monument is a public space experiment. I don't know what will happen. This horse is like a, like a white canvas to the people and expectative to get a new independence. At the end of the day, we have to pass through this moment, but it's important to understand where are we? This moment is a time to change our country. Our dreams, even fake dreams, like San Martin dreams, who supposedly dreams with a marijuana as a flag, even that dream has to be reviewed and removed. 
uh, our country is like this republic, this republic allegory in my picture. It has to be ready to see its script. On this case, the Ojada crematory, no, as a symbol of our script. Uh, the thousand of, of enforced disappeared people as a metaphor about being a colonial country. And that was capable to, to kill itself. Um, for, this is a, the, 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 the continuous task for us, for all, for all of Peruvians, you know, to be, to be in, to see our creeps, you know, our, our memory to, to rebuild our country. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Those three presentations were remarkable. Um, they, they give us a lot to think about. And so I, I will invite folks to put your questions in the Q&A. Um, we're gonna start the conversation though with a question for uh, each of you. And we can maybe go in reverse order, starting with Mauricio, Jorge, and then Karen. And I'd like to ask, this comes a little bit from what you said, Mauricio, um, algo va pasar, something's gonna happen. And that seems to be the hope of all of your work. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, how do you think about the impact of your particular artwork? How do you, how do you measure it? How do you, how, how do you gauge how impactful it is? ¿Cómo se mide el impacto de, de, de su trabajo? Um, does, does that make sense? Mauricio, do you want to start? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to try and I want to speak in English. Okay. okay. Uh, Tony, help me if I have some problem. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's the biggest question all the time, no? How can, how we artists can me, uh, measure our uh, the impact of our, our, our works. I don't know. Uh, I I understand. I, I create my art piece in into social movement. For me, it's very important to uh, be part of this movement. And I, I think really, I think I really think in in that context, art art play a role. Art is uh, like a glue. I don't know if it's okay uh, the, the, the word I, like a glue for inside the movement. And actually, is have the capacity to to show to the deck, to the to the outside the movement, uh, our feelings, our political commitment. For the rest of the society, I I, I mean, is is like it's like I probably I don't know. Uh, I encourage for for the rest of the people. Uh, then I I did done in in then uh, this is uh, both. Inside, uh, outside of the movement, are the only way I have to 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 measure my work, uh, the impact uh, which have been I don't know in, inside of outside with my with my partner, with my colleagues, with my activists. Yeah, se me entendió. Perfecto. Thank you, Mauricio. Jorge, how about you? How do you think about it? I have been thinking in that question because it's a difficult question because the artists, most of the artists don't have tools, tools for measure the impact, no? Uh, and always I think the art is a, is a mix, a mezcla, is a mix of two things, knowledge, no? and love, es decir, in other words, how do you say vínculo? The connection with the other people, no? the connection with other people. Then when people uh, meet to you and they say, they say, uh, hey, congratulations, your painting are very, no? very deep inside me, no? Maybe it's, it's, it's a kind of tool for measure, but, but I was, I, 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 no se me ocurre otra. I have been thinking in other tool for measure, but no, no idea. <laughs> 
Thank you, Jorge. Uh, Karen? Yeah, that's a very difficult uh, uh, question for me because I'm not an artist. My, my background is not as an artist and I don't make uh, pieces of art. Uh, I'm more like, a, I don't know how to say it in English, gestora or curadora. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm more in, 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 I don't know. Uh, I see, I see the, uh, and I'm remembering that uh, I have just made a class to my students about um, Dada, about fluxus, about fluxus. And we were talking about how fluxus uh, was able to, to dissolve art in everyday life, in the quotidian. I think that the, the, we, uh, the, the persons that we are linked, uh, related to art, uh, sometimes we are not, uh, connected to that everyday life. So that's why, for example, during the pandemic, during this uh, crisis, uh, uh, artists don't, didn't see uh, as, as themselves as uh, workers, as workers with, with rights. And, and, and we found that we didn't have rights. The uh, um, uh, um, laborales, I don't know, work labor, in- Labor rights, labor rights. Yeah, labor rights, for example. So I think that uh, we have a challenge that uh, that how how we can be more uh, terrenales, more more in the earth. How how can we stay more in, more, more in the earth in this on our feet? I think <laughs> uh, more connected to real people, to to the reality that hits that hit us as a as a worker, as a normal worker. So I think that um, we don't have a special sensibility. I think that that romantic idea of art, I think that still maybe in the, in the there's an aura still about, uh, in, in, about that. So I feel that because I, don't, I cannot answer that question as an artist because I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not I think I, I feel not. But I'm really hopeful about that pandemia was able to, to um, uh, create uh, creative responses, uh, um, organization in many, uh, I, I think in many collective, uh, and that's, I think some uh, hope, uh, it, it's hopeful. It's hopeful also that artists don't, uh, are not afraid anymore of, of make politics or take uh, political positions. I think that's, that's interesting. Thank you. And um, I, I think some of us do think you're an artist. And I think <laughs> the, the way that Mauricio and Jorge talked about connecting um, different peoples and movements is certainly something that all three of you do. So I think that's really, that's really striking. Uh, we have a question from Janela Engelstad, who uh, is asking all of you, she, she thanks you for your terrific work, but she's asking if if you see any connections to Peruvian artists of previous generations that were politically active, like Victor Delfin, are there any threads that connect the work creatively or politically? Um, uh, maybe we'll go reverse. Uh, Karen, you want to start and then we go back? Yeah, I think, uh, for example, that that uh, Victor Delfin that you mentioned, uh, it, it was interesting that you mentioned him because I think that one of my first um, uh, links to the social uh, movement or, or to an, an, um, an art uh, event about dictatorship was uh, uh, Victor Delfin was, was linked, was connected to that situation because he, uh, he um, uh, in his house, we were meeting to, to, to create a, a, a festival uh, against Fujimori in the end of the 90s. Um, well, I think that maybe in aesthetics, he is not <laughs> similar to a, anything that we are, we are doing now because, but in, in, in during a, a time, a certain time we were connected to an idea that was democracy, I think. And we are linked to, to many uh, uh, artists. I think, uh, I, I, I think in artists that made uh, 
pieces that made uh, strong pieces during Fujimori's uh, regime. And I think uh, someone, uh, Ricardo Vise, for example, in 1995, uh, in a contest that was very dangerous, he, he uh, went to a, a place where uh, students were kidnapped and, uh, and murdered by Fujimori. And, and he painted uh, flowers there, flowers that uh, uh, re represent those students that were disappeared. So I think that that there are artists that we saw as as reference as uh, I, I don't know. I think that there are artists that work memory uh, before us. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Jorge. What do you think? I was thinking uh, there are a lot of artist networks, no? Because I guess the Peruvian visual artists, uh, we are not problematic people, no? Uh, and the artist network depends on the conjuncture, no? ¿Cómo se dice conjuncture in English? How do you say conjuncture? Conjuncture, the, the conjunction. Conjuncture, depends on the conjuncture. Then, uh, with Victor Ralfin, for example, I painted a mural in El Averno in 2011, I remember. And then he has a important role, no? important uh, activity in the 90s against the Fujimori dictatorship. Then it depends, but there are a lot of artist network in Peru. Thank you. Mauricio. Yeah, I was thinking uh, about a question. So um, I don't know. Um, uh, for example, um, Jorge, Jorge uh, just, just talked about networks. And, and actually, I, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm a Peruvian artist and a political Peruvian artist. And there were a lot of. Uh, networks or even uh, art, Peru, political artists in, in Peru. And I, I recognize as part of this tradition or this, this history about political artists or political arts. Uh, but um, I, the, uh, I was thinking probably the most interesting uh, thing uh, for me is when artists are in different or or in another spaces, you no know, supposedly spaces for for artists, you no. Know? When an artist has connect uh, with I don't know with a with a work, syndicalism uh, syndical worker or union workers, sorry, uh, union workers, or um, or a mother of a disappears for uh, disappears mother for example for example no for me this this kind of connection this kind of reference are more uh, interesting powerful uh, and yeah i i prefer i i would prefer yeah thank you um there's a new question from uh rich watts uh for you mauricio and he writes I love the counter monument project. It's simply brilliant. Do you ask yourself though, if the problem isn't in part that we seem to need to see someone riding the horse? In other words, do you imagine producing work that rejects rather than reforms monumental art? Yeah, I, I, I need some help with that, uh, with the English, could okay. you please? Yeah, so the idea is, le, le encantó el, el proyecto de, de Contra Monumentos, pero se pregunta, uh, si no, el, el problema es necesitar a alguien encima del caballo. ¿Te puedes imaginar obras que rechazan lo, 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 lo monumental en vez de tratar de rescatarlo? I, I, I don't understand the question. Uh, how, how rechazan... Um, I don't know. Is tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Sí, no, lo, lo que estás preguntando es si, sobre todo en este momento de cambio, de rechazo al sistema, 
si tal vez la idea, la misma idea de un monumento es parte del problema. La idea yeah. de, de tener héroes. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, actually, this is the, the idea about a project. I, I don't talk about a, a lot of the, the, the project because it's a biggest project and I, I don't have uh, enough time. But yeah, it's a contra monument. Uh, it's, uh, it's a project who, who goes against the traditional monument, monuments and the traditional uh, ways to commemorate our, our heroes, our, he our memory, actually. No? All the monuments are. An, imposition in the space public, you know, is the imposition of one let one reading of our history, the one memory, you know, it's an imposition. Oh, I agree with, with, with him. Um, yeah, because uh, because that reason I I I I create this this piece with with, with a lot of people actually is it, it's, it's a work with 80, 80 people and it's not only me. Um, And the idea is, is that uh, it's a, as a monument without pedestal, no, it's installed uh, in front of the last, the, of the oldest monument, uh, the, the, main, the, the original monument, sorry. And the people uh, ride up the, the horse uh, because um, inside of, of the project is, is the, the idea of uh, demolish, rethink, uh, renew, Our, our, our moments, our imaginary assassination. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, there's so much here to, to talk about and there was so much in your presentations that was just incredibly powerful. Um, all of you, all three of you, whether it's in your artistic work or your curatorial work, do uh, really important interventions. Um, But I'm wondering if you can say a little bit about the importance or significance of the of collaboration, because all three of you are also um, very much involved in collaborative work and in, in, um, connecting, you know, different people and movements, but especially in working uh, with these. So if you could just say a little bit about about that and perhaps offer some examples of the kind of collaborative work that you've done in the past, that'd be great. Jorge, you want to start? Okay. I guess we three believe in the art has a transformative power. No? The art has a transformative power, but uh, this transformative power, power lies in, in what? No? In my opinion, in two ideas. One, It's capacity, it's capacity to move, no? The, the art can move your ideology, your, your emotion, your thoughts. And then the art can articulate different agendas of struggle. Do you know why, what I mean? <laughs> agendas mm -hmm. of struggles, agendas de lucha, okay? For example, when critic artists paint a collective mural with the feminist movement or paint a collective mural with an TLGB organization, there are examples, examples of how the arts can articulate different uh, agendas of struggle, no? The agenda of the TLGB movement, feminist movement, ecologist movement, uh, environmentalist movement, political organizations, uh, human rights movement, etc. No? I think in that two ideas, the art has an political a transformation power, no? the power for social transformation, because that paint paintings is not enough. Do you know why, what I mean? It, it's not, suffi not sufficient, it, it's not enough. You have to paint your paintings, but also you have to make other things. For example, activists, 
political militants, etc. If you want to change the world, paint or make art is not enough. Okay. Yeah, I can continue. Okay. Yeah, okay. Can I? Yeah. Uh, I I'm part I I, I work uh, inside of human rights movement and cultural via communitaria movement, uh, but the nine percent of my work or my activism is inside a human rights movement. I be part I I was part uh, from uh, I yeah. I was part of some collective uh, about human rights, but um, now I'm collaborating uh, with with another ones um, with the idea uh, uh, in the in the same in the same thing that uh, Miyagi said, no, uh, the powerful the powerful of art, no, and with that with the main idea, um, <clears throat> I. Um, uh, I lose my my idea. Sorry. <laughs> uh, um, he can talk in Spanish. You can translate. Yeah. No, no, no. Sí, eh, pues, pues, no, no, no. Leo, no, no, no. 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 Well, I think that um, that collective work is very is very beautiful. I think that I always, um, even in, in my uh, uh, solitary work uh, as a filmmaker, when I make a video, I, I always want, want a partner because I want to work that way. But I also have work and, and I'm still part of a collective that, that is the Itinerant Museum Art for Memory with uh, Jorge is actually uh, in that collective and Mauricio was part of the, a years ago. Um, uh, I think that it's very challenging. It is very difficult also because <laughs> it's not <laughs> just your idea because you, you have to put it uh, on dialogue and you have to confront your ideas and then that's not easy as a curator also it's not easy it's not easy because uh, the last word you don't have the last word and you have uh, as it's an um, exercise i think that it's a good er exercise for the ego um i think that's the beautiful thing of work as, as a collective um i, I i'm uh, put it put that in a personal or an, in a, a domestic um, atmosphere, but it politically uh, is also powerful uh, to work as a collective, and and I think that uh, uh, projects as the as uh, I I I, th I saw a project about um, uh, work labor uh, rights of uh, working trabajadores del arte that we said now. Um, I think that that is very par powerful. The organization and the, organi the, the organization that came came up in the in in difficult uh, context as the one we are closing right now. I think that that's powerful. Uh, maybe it's not easy because we always have this ambition that make a group, a big, a huge group of artists that are against Fujimori, and then we keep after we we maybe uh, are able to to uh, um, to reach our goal, and Fujimori lost uh, because that's the history of uh, our history twenty years ago. And then we thought that we can keep that organization. And then we saw that we are very different and that it's not possible. So I think that this is challenging. It's, it's a, ch a constant challenging to, to work together, I think. But, but, that, but it's beautiful also. It's difficult and it's beautiful at the same time. <laughs> Thank you. I remember. OK, Mauricio, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Uh... Yeah, uh, is at the end of my idea, I I, I participate inside this mo this movements um, with with the uh, the intention to politic politicize the cultural moment monument of movement sorry, and 
uh, culturalize, culturalize the political movement. Then, because I'm an artist in a in a culture in a in a political place, but also I'm a political and a politics in a cultural uh, place event. I, I don't know. I, we are both things. For that reason, at the, the beginning of my presentation, I I said. I'm an artist, I'm a human rights activist, and, and in, uh, there are both dimensions of my life are, 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 to wear, are together are all the time, you know? Uh, it's very important, and in that case, uh, just the current said, um, collectives are, are a constant lesson. There are a, a great space to, to rebuild, uh, to remind our, our our learners, uh, no, our learning, nuestro aprendizaje, our, uh, yeah, um, because you have to negotiate, you have to to talk with people, you have to talk with people which is not art, it's just, I don't know, uh, another, all, all the profession, and it's, it's, it's a, a great place to, to learn, and I probably, this is the, the main thing about uh, political issues or political movements or activism, yeah. Okay, this is great. We've got a, a couple more questions. Um, if it's okay with you, I'd like to ask them both and then maybe ask you to respond. Is that okay? Okay, so the first one is from Martha Ryan and it's um, addressed to, uh, to Karen and, and Jorge. Uh, you mentioned that the reception of your work, uh, uh, the, re the reaction of art critics. I want to ask if art critics changed their perspective once the work became more widespread. Mm -hmm. Or do you as artists have to keep working against the opinions of art critics because the art is seen as prioritizing politics over aesthetics? So, entonces, una pregunta sobre las críticas y si, si las críticas han, han tenido un impacto en su trabajo. Um, esa, es, esa es una. La segunda pregunta is for everybody, and it's from Morgan Galloway, who asks, she says, thank you so much for your amazing work and your presentations. I wonder what thoughts are on how social media has changed the way we use and see art to memorialize. Can you speak to the use of Instagram or TikTok, for example, and how politics, art, and memory come together online? Una pregunta digital. ¿Cómo ha cambiado en los medios sociales? ¿Cómo han cambiado um, arte y, y, y también eh, procesos de, de memoria? Y política. Y política. Uh, okay, um, can we start with... Uh, Let's let them decide who Yeah, okay, you, you guys decide. Who wants to start? <laughs> okay. Okay, Jorge, 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 go ahead. Okay, uh, to Marta Ryan. Uh, I think it depends because there are some art critics that have some ideas that fit your artwork, no? Do you know what I, I mean? Fit your artwork, but other art critics maybe uh, don't have good intentions. Do you know what I mean? Because all the arts, every um, every art. Uh, manifestations is political. I don't. I, I don't like to to talk about uh, political art because because for me the art always is political art because you have a position face to the relation of domination and subordination in the in the social world. Then. Some art critics have position, and and as as an artist as, as artist, we have position too. It depends. Maybe an opinion is a good opinion. Maybe it's only for for contrast for fights. No, uh, uh, that is the, the idea. Uh, okay. Como quieras, Jorge. 
Si quieres responder, ah, yeah. sí, abrimos el resto. I use the social media only for, ¿cómo se dice difundir? How do you say difundir? Mm, Just to uh, for disseminate, disseminate your disseminate. work. Disseminate. Disseminate mm -hmm. my, my art, ¿no? Because uh, I know the social media is a, is a tool for the social control, for the social control, ¿no? For the social control. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Karen, do you want to go next? Okay. Well, um, I think uh, the same of Jorge that um, some critics, uh, everything can be criticized. I think that. Uh, but some critics are not like uh, the, the critics that came for uh, visual resistance from the rightists and from political rightists. The, the, some of the, the, the press reporters, uh, the rightist press reporters of the worst TV channel uh, were analyzing the posters. <laughs> so I, didn't, uh, I, 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 I think I'm not going to listen that that persons. But yeah, uh, Resistencia Visual in that spe specific case, it changed to me because it was the last work I made uh, the, the last artwork I make about memory. It, I was very, very, very tired of being censored, of, be, of my work being uh, uh, treated like that way. And it was, uh, uh, it, it was, a, 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 I, it, it has a personal call, cost for me, for my work. Even if the, the exhibition was uh, after that successful and it was very beautiful and I didn't regret about doing Resistencia Visual, but I, I think I, I need to, to have a, a, a break because I, 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 I think that they, um, sometimes I think that they gain of, uh, of uh, cansar me, uh, of, I don't know how to say it, but. <laughs> yeah, you're tired. You're tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, uh, but no, I, I didn't leave uh, of human rights movement, but I stopped of doing uh, art uh, related to memory. Um, so yeah, I think that changed, uh, but not in the best way, <laughs> I, and not for the criticize, for the critics. And then um, about the other thing about the media, I think that everything is changed, has changed uh, for the pandemia. And for example, some exhibitions I made are now on the website are now virtual exhibitions. So I think that, um, that virtualism is, is, uh, um, has appeared and, and is going to stay. Even when the pandemic end for us, uh, I think that, that virtual exhibitions, that uh, social media, that all kind of, that all that, that kind of uh, uh, possibilities of dissemination uh, are going to stay and, and has changed the work of all the artists, I think, because you have, the, the people has uh, reinventar, how do you say, uh, the, the yeah. recreate the self, recreate the world, yeah, I think that. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Mauricio. Uh, okay, uh, the question about the, the social media, yeah. Um, well, um, internet is a great thing. I, I have social media, I spend a lot of time on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I have I have Facebook and Instagram. You can see my artwork there. Um, I actually, I made a, a network uh, some years ago, Un Día en la Memoria, uh, I talked about that in, in my presentation, but, uh, but it's a problem. I don't know, I act, I'm not an enthusiastic uh, internet guy. Um, there is, uh, I don't know, we, I think we have to, to, con to save, to save the, the technology gap Salvar la brecha tecnológica to get, to save the, the technology gap and in in our in a, in a country like Peru uh, is an it's a country so inequality no uh, it's very difficult uh, think uh, make memory or another kind of project only about uh, internet no or about uh, net uh, for example I, I work in a museum uh, Casa de la Literatura. 
I'm, I'm the museographer there. And since quarantine start, I, I we are, we have been uh, thinking how how to continue, you know, uh, as a museum. And I, my fight right now in 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 the museum is uh, we have to save the technologic uh, gap. I think we have to to pass away the not pass away no. We have to to save that the the screen is. Uh, we have to to create new new kinds of projects projects uh, which be, which connect I don't know houses with 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 screens yeah of course con with internet but not only with the screens space public is a is a, a very good place to to rethink our 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 work yeah internet is there is is going to be here for a long time but we we have to. Nosotros tenemos una exigencia. I don't know. We have a, 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 demand. a challenge. We have a challenge. Internet. The, the uh, internet um, mustn't be the, the only way to communicate. I don't know how, but I think this is the, the biggest task of, on this time. That's Thank it. you. That's, that's perfect. That's, yeah. that's great. Um, we are very happy that some of our students will have a chance to continue the conversation um, mm -hmm. yeah, in the next few days. Uh, so uh, we know it's later in Lima than it is in Seattle, but we thank you for being so generous with your time. You actually made the sun come out in Seattle. Yes. I don't know how you did it, but it was impressive. Mm -hmm. um, and we're in your debt. We, are, we thank you for your work. We continue to learn from you and we we hope that we'll continue being in conversation with all of you. So thank you so much. Yeah, I just wanna to echo Tony, this is really tremendous work and we are we are really excited about continuing our collaboration with you all in multiple ways uh, and very much hope that we can actually see you in person not too long from now. Um, so here's hoping, uh, but we know that things are really difficult to do and we will continue to be thinking about you um, over the next few, weeks and months. And thank you again. This was fantastic. We could keep talking for many, many, many hours. <laughs> so we, we're uh, getting ready to conclude. Is there any final words that you would like to share with us before we say good night? Mm -hmm. I think that we hope we have a, a good, um, now we are crossing with a, a very difficult situation as a country. Uh, the uh, presidential elections are not so hopeful, and also the bicentenario of our country. So I think that's a very um, critical situation, and elections is like in three weeks. So I think that the final words are that Keiko uh, Novata. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the same way, you no. Know, uh, thank you for the invitation. The, uh, this moment is a very difficult moment in our country. We uh, have to avoid uh, Keiko Fujimori becomes a president, and we are so tired in, in the campaign against Keiko Fujimori. And um, but these spaces are like a, I don't know, like a refresh, like a cool water uh, in that times. Thank you, Tony Marilena. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this moment. And about the Peruvian situation, I think the same that Karen and Mauricio is a critical situation, but I hope that <laughs> I hope that Keiko will lose the election. Maybe. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we also want to thank our participants for, uh, yes. for being here with us. There are some very nice words in the Q&A box for all of you for your incredible work. And, uh, and we want to wish everyone well. Be safe, take care, and we hope to see you all soon. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.